everybody! Today's project is we're going to be scrapping some old cell phones and some routers for the gold, silver, and electrical components. Before scrapping, we want to make sure that they don't work. So we set up a little station here for charging, and if they turn on, we won't scrap them, but we'll sell them on eBay. The ones that don't work, we will scrap. Alright, so here we've got a few Blackberry phones, we've got some Samsung T-Mobile phones, we've got some Nextel phones, we've also got some Sprint phones. In order to take apart the cell phone, you're going to need to remove all the screws. There's a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, and a screw here. And then here, these, and then I took apart two plastic things to get inside here, and there may be screws in here. Save the SIM card from your phones as they have gold plating on the back. Taking apart most phones is pretty easy. Once you get past the screws, you can easily separate most cables. If you have a good set of hex bit tools, you can easily take apart most cell phones. If you don't see a screw, the part may be glued down. Check under the keypads on non-smartphones and you will find a lot of gold plating. Most flip phones will have more screws holding in the top part. Older Blackberries are very easy to disassemble and they have lots of gold playing, the most we have seen on a phone. The boards on most phones have the same parts as a computer motherboard. Lots of IC chips which contain gold, small capacitors which have silver and palladium, and of course, gold plating as well. Alright, so we finished taking apart the cell phones, now I'm going to take apart these routers and see what's inside. The routers are easy to take apart, but some screws may be hidden underneath the label. The routers have a little bit of gold plating on the board and some gold plated pins in the ethernet slots. There are some IC chips which may contain gold some capacitors and other components you will want to save. One router had a processor chip with gold pins along the bottom and some gold plating on the back. We also took apart a DSL modem and there wasn't much gold there, just a few chips and various components. Here is a little speck of gold on one of the IC chips. The rest are IC chips, transistors and capacitors and some gold plating on the pins. Each of the routers had gold plating on the back where the antenna screw onto the router. Here's a recap of what you can recover from a cell phone. We have some steel. The flip phones have tiny but powerful neodymium magnets. These are tiny little motors which provide the vibration for the phone when it is on silent mode. When you remove the white plastic from the keyboard, the little dots are steel so you can put that in your steel pile. A bunch of gold plated ribbon which also had some monolithic ceramic capacitors. We will remove the gold from these in another video. The antennas contain some aluminum and steel, but it's hard to separate from the plastic. The circuit boards contain a lot of gold plating, and the old Blackberries had the most gold plating of all the phones we scrapped. The other phones had gold plating, and even candy bar type phones had lots of gold plating. We have some small speakers which have copper wire and magnets inside. A bunch of old LCD screens and some miscellaneous aluminum. And we will just recycle the batteries. Alright, so we're done taking apart the cell phones and what we figured out is that the older the cell phone, the more gold plating it would have on it. This Blackberry was from around 2004, and we got tons of gold out of it. And from this router that we took apart, 
There wasn't really much gold, but we also have these icy chips, which may have gold in them. We're going to show you how to remove the gold out of these cell phone boards in another video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.